Welcome back to Math on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this next set of videos, we're going to introduce a very important and useful tool in calculus, and that is L'Hopital's Rule. So L'Hopital's Rule is something that we use to evaluate limits that have what are, what's called indeterminate form. Okay. In this video, I'm going to do the proof and one simple example, and then the next few videos we're going to do a bunch of examples. Okay. All right, so what is L'Hopital's rule useful for? Well, here I have a limit, which is where it would become useful. I have the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Now, if you just plug in 0, sine of 0 is 0, and then x of just plug in 0. So you get 0 over 0, and we can't do that. We can't have that as an answer. But this is actually just not 0 over 0. In fact, it turns out to be 1. And unless you want to do some complicated trigonometry stuff with a unit circle, there's a, you, you should use the L'Hopital's rule, which is a much easier way of evaluating this limit. Now, this 0 over 0 is what we call indeterminate form. And there's a lot of kinds of indeterminate forms, but the two most common that you'll run into in calculus are 0 over 0 and plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. Okay. Now, this particular one has the form 0 over 0. And that's actually the form we're going to use to actually do the proof of L'Hopital's rule. And we'll find out what it is. So, here I have a function on the top. I'm going to call this one f of x. And it doesn't matter what it is. In this case, it's sine of x. But this is a function of x on the top. I'm going to call that f of x. In the denominator, this x is going to be g of x. Okay? So, I basically have the quotient of two different functions. All right, so to start by proving L'Hopital's rule, we start with the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x. And c is not necessarily 0 as it is here. c is just the value that you plug in for x that makes this 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Okay? So it doesn't have to be 0. But this is our limit. Now, let me ask you a question. If I subtract 0 from both the numerator and denominator, did I change the value of that limit? Well, no. It wouldn't matter if f of x and g of x are both infinity or they're both zero. If I subtract zero from anything, it doesn't change its value. So this is still the same thing. Now, instead of just having zero, what I'm going to say is both the zeros are going to be their corresponding functions of c. So the zero I'm going to change to f of c, and this zero in the bottom I'm going to change to g of c. Did I change the value of this limit if I'm assuming it's an indeterminate form? No. And why is that? Well, this is not the next step. I'm just showing you. If I actually evaluate this now and plug in c for x, I get now f of c minus this already here f of c, then plug c in for this x, I get g of c minus g of c. Well, the top, it's just f of c minus f of c. That's 0. g of c minus g of c is 0. So if I'm assuming that this is an indeterminate form, f of x over g of x, if I turn the limit into this right here, it's still an indeterminate form. I didn't change the value of this limit. So this is still valid right here. Okay, now going down here, this is back to where we are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by x minus c. So in the numerator, I now have f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c. And then in the denominator, I have g of x minus g of c divided by x minus c. And again, because I did the same thing to both the numerator and denominator, I didn't change this limit's value. Okay? Because if the numerator of both of these is still 0, it doesn't matter what x minus c is. It's still in determinate form. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is, because I'm taking the limit of the quotient of two expressions, I can actually just put the limit on both of these instead of having one big outer limit. So all I did is I didn't change what's inside here, I just put the limit on both of these. Okay, So it's two separate limits, although they're the same limit. And what is each of these limits? What are each of these? These are the definitions of the derivative of f and g respectively with respect to x. So this top where I have f of x minus f of c all over x minus c, as the limit as x goes to c, 
this is one form or one way to write the derivative of f with respect to x. Likewise, in the denominator, this is another way of writing the derivative of g with respect to x. So ultimately, if I now rewrite these as the derivative notation, I have this final very important rule, which is L'Hopital's rule, that if I have the limit as x goes to c of two functions, f of x over g of x, that is the same thing as taking the limit as x goes to c of the derivative of f with respect to x divided by the derivative of g with respect to x. Okay? Basically, what this means in the simplest terms is if I have a limit like this, limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x, and when you plug in whatever x goes to, and it goes to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you have indeterminate form. All you do to evaluate it is you take the derivative of the top, and then you take the derivative of the bottom, and you keep doing that until you can evaluate it. That's all you do. Let's do a simple example down here to really gain traction on L'Hopital's rule. It's the same limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. L'Hopital's rule says that I need to take the derivative of the numerator and then take the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of sine of x with respect to x? It's cosine of x in the bottom. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? 1. Now, can I plug in 0 and it not be an indeterminate form? Yes, because what is cosine of 0? It's 1. So this limit just becomes 1 over 1, which is 1. And that's all L'Hopital's rule is. If you have something in the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you just take the derivative of the top, divide it by the derivative of the bottom, and you keep doing that until it's in a form that you can just plug that number in without it being an indeterminate form. Okay. Now, L'Hopital's rule, since you're taking derivatives, you're not doing quotient rule. You're independently taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Okay? Let's do one more example, and then we'll finish up the other examples in another video. Okay? Um, I've also added this here for uh, some other videos that we're going to do. Two other kinds of indeterminate form that we're not going to see in this video is 1 to the infinity, or something in this form, or something in the form 0 to the 0 power. These are also two other kinds of indeterminate forms that we can see. All right, here's our limit. The limit is x goes to negative infinity for x squared divided by e to the 1 minus x. Well, let's think about this. Okay, what happens if we plug in negative infinity? Well, if we plug it into the top, negative infinity squared is just positive infinity. And then if we plug it into the bottom, what's 1 minus negative infinity? It's just positive infinity, so e to the positive infinity is positive infinity. So we have something that's in this form, infinity over infinity, so this is an indeterminate form. We need to take derivatives. So here's what we do. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of x squared with respect to x? It's 2x, right? Now let's do the denominator. What's the derivative of the denominator e to the 1 minus x? Well, we're going to have just the exponential back, e to the 1 minus x, times the derivative of the inside function, 1 minus x. This is just chain rule. And the derivative of 1 minus x is just negative 1. So let's see if we can evaluate this now. Well, if we plug in negative infinity to 2x, we just get negative infinity. And then here, if we plug in negative infinity, we get infinity times negative 1, which is negative infinity. This is still an indeterminate form because we have infinity over infinity. So we have to do L'Hopital's rule a second time. And that's the beauty of L'Hopital's rule. You just keep taking derivatives until it's out of indeterminate form. So here we resume down here on the second line where we're going to do this a second time. And I've also pulled this negative sign out in front of the limit. What's the derivative of 2x with respect to x? 2. That's a good sign. We no longer have a 0 or infinity in the numerator. And what's the derivative of e to the 1 minus x with respect to x? Well, we've already done that. It's e to the 1 minus x times negative 1. Right? And again, these negative signs will cancel, so the limit will be positive. And now we have the limit as x goes to minus infinity of 2 over e to the 1 minus x. What happens when we plug in negative infinity here? We get e to the infinity. So this essentially becomes 2, to the, 2 over e to the infinity. Now we don't actually write this, but just so you can get a sense, it's 2 over infinity, which is 0. So this limit 
of x squared over e to the 1 minus x as x goes to negative infinity is 0. Okay. What L'Hopital's rule is basically doing, just so you can get an intuition about this, is you're basically asking yourself, does the numerator or denominator blow up faster? Because if the numerator blows up more quickly, then the entire limit is going to diverge and go to infinity. But if the denominator blows up faster, then most likely this limit is either going to go to zero or it's going to converge to some value. In this case, it just went to zero, which is fine. It still converges to zero. Um, it doesn't diverge to infinity. But the, all L'Hopital's rule is saying is what blows up faster, the numerator or denominator? And the way you determine that is by taking derivatives because derivatives tells you the rate of change the rate of increase in a lot of cases, okay? So hopefully this made L'Hopital's rule make a little more sense. In the next few videos, we're gonna do some examples of L'Hopital's rule. Join us in those videos. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.